Hello everyone. So in this video, I want to go over how to export out of anime. I figure having this as its own discrete video that you can quickly reference back to will be handy because eventually you will want to get this stuff out of here in something other than a Swift file. And um, so I want you to be able to get to it. Um, so normally when we are dealing with this, we hit control enter and it puts together a Swift file. Um, but that Swift file is useless except for us to preview. It's a fantastic preview option. It is terrible to send to anyone. Um, so how do we get a useful video out of here? Um, there's two different ways I'm going to show you. So one of them involves you have just an entire thing. In this case, I've got another student from a previous semester and it's their, their word poem. Um, and let's say you want to put your word poem up on YouTube, like I did a thing, or you want it to be, um, you know, just so something you, you put somewhere, you want to export it in case you, this file breaks, whatever it is. Um, so that's going to be different from if you've got something that is part of a larger film. So I have an animated clip here, um, unfinished obviously it didn't even have a title yet but um it's part of a larger film and so therefore just doing its own export isn't going to be good enough because sound can't be coming from here and in other considerations um so before we do any exporting at all we actually want to check our export settings and unfortunately those are called publish settings in this program um so we go to publish settings and you may have to you know twirl down the advanced um, options to look at include don't include hidden layers um, because I find that I often don't want those included. Um, check the if you are doing a discrete video that is by itself a standalone video. Um, make sure you're checking the audio settings. Um, you can see what my default, at least on my old file, uh, is. It used to be uh, 16 kbps. That is obviously not enough. Um, so you want to click on here. Make sure it's using, um, you know, good audio compression, um, as many kbps as we can. I should probably have the quality set to best. Um, and don't convert stereo to mono. So make sure um, these settings are all set up for what you want. I wouldn't go away from MP3. Um, if you're making just an, a standalone video to post online, like some of these other ones, it's gonna, the file's gonna be too big. It's gonna take too long, um, and there's no point in it anyways because it's it's not gonna have like a high high audio fidelity um, because you shouldn't be trying to get good good audio out of here anyways. Um, we can also turn up the JPEG quality all the way. You know, having it down at 80% is fine when we're just previewing it, but sometimes we want to make it look real nice. Um, it may or may not be engaged depending on uh, what other settings you use. So let us see. Okay. So we hit okay. Saves all those things. And then we go to file, export, and you'll see that there's a lot of options. We're going to, at least for this one, for, you know, your own video, we're going to go to export video and it's going to ask us a few questions. One of them is convert video in Adobe Media Encoder. Yeah, you're probably going to need to do that. The way it's going to, if you don't click that, it's going to pop out an MOV file, like a QuickTime file. 12 years ago, that was fantastic. Um, but we, <laughs> we have different codecs now. Um, so you're almost certainly going to need to click that. Stop escorting when last frame is reached. Or you can specify a time um, where you're going to place it. Obviously, you just browse using a file browser so you can figure out you know where it's going to go. This last one here, ignore stage color. So I had mentioned probably much earlier in the semester that when you are creating things, if you need the color to change on the background, you know, don't don't count on the stage color as your actual background. And this is why. Um, sometimes you may need to be able to see through things. Um, so you can, if you tell it to ignore stage color, it's going to generate an alpha channel around all these letters, and then you could put a new background in. Obviously, in this case, we don't want that, but the options there. So I hit export. Don't worry about these warnings. It has to do with the labels um, because he used the same word more than once. And what's going to happen, I'll probably pause the video for a second while I wait for Adobe Media Encoder to pop up. Okay, so getting Adobe Media Encoder to pop up took about a minute. Um, not surprising because technically what it did is it rendered 
a file that is stuck somewhere and now it's going to convert that file to something a little bit more useful. And in our case, an MP4 is what I have as my default. Um, so for those who don't know, Adobe Media Encoder is sort of a standalone, let me, there we go. Um, it's a standalone sort of thing that comes with your Adobe stuff as long as you have, I think, After Effects or Premiere or Animate. Um, and it's one job is to encode stuff into different stuff. Um, so you can bring up files in here if you want to. There's some presets over here I literally never use. Um, and basically I work in this section right here. So whenever you come out of uh, um, another Adobe program, whether it's Animate or Premiere or After Effects, it will automatically put your stuff in here. And what it's putting in here is this is, uh, you know, the output where it's, where it's going to put the file. And it's going to put it in the same place as the thing that just got rendered. Um, so it's, this is, yep. So this is where my other file actually is. And I think I can go there right now if I want to, to show you. 205 files. And it would have rendered it as, let's see. There it is, um, a movie, an MOV file. And you can see one of the reasons we need to re-encode this, it's 181 megabytes. Um, Animate itself is not really capable of compressing anything and you don't wanna have to upload a 181 megabyte file if you can help it. And certainly that's no good to be sending through email. Um, all right, so it's going to place the new file by default in the same location as the old file. Um, the file extension is going to be based on what you have here for settings. So if I click on here, and yours might be set to H.264 by default, it might not be. If it's not, you click here, and it brings up this window. There's a lot going on here, but mostly you can just go to the settings for H.264. Um, H.264 is basically a YouTube-ish compression. Um, it's really good at getting a smaller file, like a lot of bang for your buck. So a lot of good vis visual for a smaller file size. For those of you who do understand these compression things, there are all sorts of other ones, depending on what you're trying to make, etc. cetera. Um, make sure audio and video are selected. If you need audio and video, if you do not need audio, turn it off, save some file space. Um, and then it's going to spell out everything that's going on in here, but you can, you can click through, you know, audio, video and everything to see what other options there are. If again, you are comfortable with, you know, all these compression things. If you're not just use the default for H.264, it works pretty well. Okay. Um, uh, and so once we've got our settings, basically we've chosen H.264 as the preset and then, um, we've chosen where it's going to go. We hit this little play button. So technically what we have here is a queue. You can line up multiple things in there if you want, but that's why you play it, right? You're playing through the, the, the queue of stuff. Um, so now, all right, there we go. Now we have complete film, but dot MP4 six megabytes rather than 181, which means we can send it along to a client or anything like that. And if I double click, ah, might take a second to open up VLC. There we go. Um, now, one of the other reasons this is a small file size is that this is a small file. It's only 550 by 400, which makes it, I don't know, one sixth as big as a standard HD file, possibly less. Um, so that's something to consider. Um, another thing to consider is that, you know, we've just kind of compressed it twice. Um, you know, we exported it as one thing with the MOV file, and then we, then we re, you know, compressed it as this.mp4. Um, if you are used to, if you know exactly what your song sounds like, you may hear a little bit of a change. Um, and that's okay, but just, you know, um, keep in mind that this is, it's compressing and then recompressing. Um, so it's good for like a, a quick video. Um, and if it's going to go up online anyways, to be watched on a phone, then it's, it's a little bit less of a concern. 
But if for some reason you need real high fidelity, you need really good video um, and you need really good audio, then you might try this other option. This other option um, is more designed around a project that does not end in here. So I have, you know, animation that I'm doing in here, but sound effects are going to be done elsewhere. There's multiple shots, right? Um, there's, uh, you know, if you're working on a bigger project, yeah, you know, I've got this little two right here, um, then th this isn't going to be the end. Um, and certainly audio will not come out of here. So how do we export from here in a way that it can go into Premiere or go into After Effects where you can put the audio in um, and kind of get the, the, the best visual quality that we can. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go File, and we're going to still make sure our Publish Settings, by the way, do not include Hidden Layers, um, because that is always there and it is always annoying. But we don't have to worry about the audio settings because we're not exporting the audio from here. Um, this is going to have nothing to do with the audio settings at all because this is, again, what we're going to export is an image sequence. So we're going to File, Export, Movie, not not video, movie. And um, this has no idea where it wants to start, so I gotta tell it. Um, I'm gonna make a file just for this um, because an image sequence is going to be an awful lot of images. They're gonna be still images. Now, because we're in a vector program, PNGs will probably look the best, but that might depend on what you have in here. Um, I have my animation in here, but I also have my backgrounds. And um, if I actually turn this off for a second, this is what the backgrounds are going to look like. Now I can export the backgrounds from here, or I can also turn that off and have just the animation which is probably what I would end up doing. So if I just have this, a PNG is really good. If I need to include this, it, you know, because we've got a painting in the background, it might be something different. Um, but we're going to do just the animation. We're going to say export movie. Ah, shoot. There it is. Um, we're going to say PNG sequence. Um, and it is going to do the whole thing. And I know that seems like a lot of wasted white space, but that's okay. Um, we hit save. And then uh, we look for the document size. Yes, that's the right document size. Um, you can choose up to 32 bit color. And I can, now we're going from vectors to raster. Um, and one thing the export to video doesn't ask you is what, resolution, what DPI. Um, so I can specify a higher or lower DPI depending on how this is going to end up. Now 1280 by 960 is not small. It's not huge, but you know, 960 is pretty tall and this isn't very widescreen, uh, you know, on purpose. Um, so 72 DPI might be enough. I could up it if I wanted to. Um, and because it's vector, this is the one time when you can make something bigger instead of smaller. Once you export this, it's going to be, uh, and I'm going to show you, it's going to be a bitmap. Um, so there will be no making it bigger. And what it's doing, and I can actually go here right now. You can see it's creating a series of images. I think it's done. Yes. Um, and each of these images, let me put this as extra large. There we go. You can see the animation. If I scroll fast enough, you can actually see it, <laughs> which is always fun. Um, these images can be sequenced in Premiere or After Effects, and it's easy. You just click, like literally, you just go into one of those programs and you say import, and you click one of these, and the program's smart enough to say, oh, is this an image sequence? And you're like, well, yes, it is. And then it just takes the whole thing, and it sequences them, and you tell them how many frames per second, in this case, uh, 12. And you can tell them, um, you know, how just all the interpolation ideas, you can resize it. Um, if you need to make it smaller um, or crop it, if you you know need to not have so much on the border, whatever it is you need to do, you can do it. Um, 
but the the idea here, I wonder if I can preview this without Photoshop. Let's find out. Um, is to create a sequence of images that are of the, oh, nope. <laughs> There's always gonna be something crashing. Um, something that's the highest quality that we can get um, because we were working in vectors. So, I mean, these are just scribbles because it's the early days of drawing, but it's, there's no fuzzy borders right now. If I was to open up one of those PNGs and hopefully it wouldn't crash, um, there would be technically fuzzy borders at that point. But by having it be um, a sequence of images, that's the highest quality you can get. When we did the, um, the video before, when we did export video, this complete film, it has to compress it um, necessarily. And it's already sequencing it for you at 12 frames a second. And you're not going to change that later. Um, you know, there's, it's kind of setting a lot of things in stone, including video quality. Um, and then we recompress it again to put it into something useful and not completely archaic, like the way a quick time movie is. By using a series of images, whether it's PNGs or JPEGs, those are, as far as we can tell right now, forever. A JPEG is forever. So if you do this series of images, um, you can bring this into somewhere else and you can put effects on it. You can time it with other shots. You can add your audio later. Um, you have a lot more flexibility. and It's going to be higher quality. This, You can also do that same thing with this and then re-add in the sound. Now that depends a little bit on how much editing you might have done with the sound. So if we um, go here to see if any editing was done with the sound, it looks like the editing was done afterwards. Yeah, it actually just stops. So um, this person, um, he edited his audio elsewhere um, and then brought it in and it starts exactly the way he wanted it to, which means he could, you could export a, you know, se image sequence of this, take that exact same audio clip that you imported into here and resync them in Premiere and, or After Effects. And if you're thinking, well, that seems like an extra step. It is, but it's worth it because exporting from those programs looks very pretty and sounds very good. In this program, it won't sound bad. You know, it'll sound fine. We we watched these before and they, they looked pretty good and they sounded pretty good. But if, if you're looking for like, you know, a film, if you're trying to put something into a movie um, or if you're looking to really make a good demo reel or something like that, um, you it, you may want to, you know, separate out the, the you know, the images from the audio, export them there and then resync them in the other program. All right, um, and that will give you the world of export options later, and you also won't be double compressing it. You will not be exporting it once and then exporting it again. All right, so which one you use depends on what you're trying to do. I would say overall, if you are just going to be putting, you know, discrete video online, this, you know, export video works fine, brings up Adobe Media Encoder, it's going up on YouTube for people to watch on their phones or on Wi-Fi. It, you know, it's not it's not going up on a like a Blu-ray with a screen. If you're working as part of a larger project as a client, uh, or rather as a contractor, and your client is needing something a little bit higher fidelity, then you would export an image sequence, which is under export movie, believe it or not, not export image. Don't ask me why. Um, and you would choose the right image type for the, you know, what's going on here, and then you would use something like After Effects or Premiere to sequence it later.